washed off the boat, still wet and hot. Don't turn around. Put the cops is waiting on this. What do you say? A half a buck, four bits, half a half a banana. What do you say, huh? Say, these pages are all black. Are you kidding? Of course the pages is blank. Invisible ink. You got to hold it in front of a flame. Too hot to carry. Hey, Lefty! Lefty! Boy, I've been hunting all over for you. I'm really knocked out. Here, the landlady said to give you this wire. Oh, boy, happy days is here again. Good news, <laughs> huh? You ain't kidding. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Lefty. Haven't you forgotten something? How about crossing my palm with a little oh, mula? Uh, well, uh, I tell you, I want to do you the biggest favor of your life. Yeah? You are now the owner of the biggest publishing house in New York. For nothing. Thanks. <clears throat> Rent or out you go. But, my dear madam, you are placing the country in jeopardy. We are at war, madam. And Tungsten is the backbone of a nation. Do your part. I have here a gilt edge hair of the Epidabba Montana Tungsten Tunnels. Take it. Oh, in six months you too can become a war profiteer. They will hate you as they hate me. You said it. But what will you care? You will be rolling in millions. Ten dollar bills will ooze from your finger. I don't want millions. I want six dollars and forty cents. Now, what do you want? A telegram for you, Mr. Phony Deacon David. Thank you. <laughs> Madam, you fell into something. You are now the sole owner of the Abadabba Tungsten Tunnels and may the priority board have mercy on your soul. Hey, buddy. I got a tip for you. It's hot as a firecracker. The two for me. Rose Quartz. The second. Second? This is the third. Rose Quartz ran last. Uh, smart, huh? Okay, lady. Don't be a mooch or don't be chump. Huh? Get smart. I got a tip for you. Fifteen to one. It comes straight from the jockey. The horse loves me. I give him sugar. Sugar? Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, haven't you heard? Hmm? Willie, how things? Oh, Curly, take this from hunger. I got a telegram for you. Willie, what do you got for me in the next race? Curly, you was talking to the wrong character. I ain't interested in horses no more. <laughs> be that tell. Gee, boss, I'm hungry. I can't take it. Yeah, well, that, that goes for me, too. Shut up. I've been feeding you for years, ain't I? Yeah, but not for the last three days. I said shut up. You got a nickel mouse? You mean a slug. All right, a slug. Give it to me. Give with the body, English. If I hit the jackpot, we eat. If not, get your gats ready. We're gonna do a little job in the cigar store. Gats away. We're going to Central City. Yeah, 
Thanks, Doc. I'll three finger Louie. Oh, he's swell. Good. Looks like a juvenile, Doc. I live right. I'm telling you, there's no fun being honest. Help yourself to a drink. I gave up the most lucrative publishing house on 44th Street. Hello, Lefty. Hello, Doc. Hello, Hello Willie. Hello, Doc. You should have seen my customers. There was the 400, some of the 200. That's nothing. They were begging me to be their pal. There was the governor, a couple of isolations, an occasional stool pigeon, and even a lady. Gentlemen. With a mere hundred thousand dollars, I manipulated myself into the presidency of the Abba Tungsten Tunnels. No, I wouldn't do this for everybody, but I can let you in on a small block. I am already in on a large block of government bonds. I'll talk it over with my broker. Hello, Mouse. How's it? Pretty good. How Hello, are you? Mouse. Hello, Willie. Gentlemen, one moment of silence, please, for our past exalted leader, Big Mike Morgan. Gee, don't he look natural? They loved him in Alcatraz. There was a genius. And yeah. smart, too. Shut up. All right, boys, let's get down to business. There was a time not so long ago when we were all sitting pretty. Remember the take? But that's all over. and has been for a long time. Things have been tough. Very tough. From the moment Big Mike Morgan left us, things went to pot. With Big Mike went the golden age. And do you know why? Because we didn't have a leader. Remember, gentlemen, united we stand, divided we fall. That's right, that's right. Gentlemen, now is the time to reorganize. No, well, sounds okay. What about the G-men? You know, they ain't gonna like it. Don't worry. I thought of that. They've got their hands full slapping the Japs and kicking the Bunsters around. So while they're busy doing that, we're going to move in. Sharp as a tack. I'm 100% with you, Doc. And I'm taking over. Right, boys? No, you don't, Sorelli. People won't stand for that trigger stuff nowadays. How about me, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> no, Willie, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid you're just too stupid. Yeah, too stupid. Gee, I never thought of that. Suppose you picked out the top spot for yourself. No, I'm not important enough. My name wouldn't mean a thing. No, what we need is a man who is fearless. A man who can command the respect of everybody. A man of courage. There's only one man in the world of the reputation we need. A man whose name will bring the mob together again. A man whose name will make the businessman set up and pay off. And that man is Big Mike Morgan's son. Oh, I didn't know he was married. Son. How do we know this kid's any good? How do we know he'll go for the idea? That's what we got to find out. I'm sending you, Lefty. And you, Willie, to contact him immediately. I want you to look him over carefully. I'll get things rolling at this end if the kid's okay. You put cherries in these things? Oh, yes, Cousin Holly. Don't say anything, Holly. That's extra. Oh, don't let the price worry you. Nothing's too good for Tilly, eh, Tilly? <laughs> Get it. Oh, I should have known. Mama says for you to get home early tonight. You were late last night. Oh, I'm sorry, Cousin Ollie. I'll ask the if I can get off earlier tonight. <coughs> Say, D.A., will it be all right if I get off at 6 tonight? Say, hey. well, now, wait a minute, John. Yeah, I reckon that'll be all right. Uh, except that I want you to make a few collections on your way home. Yes, D.A. Uh, and yes, um, Sheriff Driscoll's been hankering for fresh pineapples for over two weeks. I just got a new crate in, so you might as well drop a couple at his offers uh, on the way home. Yes, D.A., thank you. Hey, Eddie, before I forget it, I want two packages of cigarettes, two chocolate bars, the large ones, and a uh, package of jelly beans for Tilly. Yes, Cousin Ollie, but that'll be 85 cents. Well, charge it. Yes, Cousin Ollie. Just a minute, young fella. Since when did you open a charge account in this store? No, no, D.A., let's not have any bickering. Charge to the kid. It's all right, D.A. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
Pardon us. Do you know a character, Edward Morgan? Yeah, I'm his cousin, Oliver Harris. What do you want to see him about? Well, it's a little matter of uh, personal business. Personal business? He didn't inherit any money, did he? Well, not exactly. But if it's the right Mr. Morgan, it ain't gonna be hay. Well, well, come right in. He should be here in a minute. Where's Mr. Morgan now? He's out making some collections. Dropping off a couple of pineapples at the sheriff's office. Pineapple collections? That's him. That's Eddie. Say, uh, would you mind ducking buddy? This is kind of poisonous. Yeah, private like. Try. No, I live here. This is my house. Well, if you put it that way, all right. Oh, I beg your pardon, the phone's ringing. Hello? Oh, hello, D.A. He knows the D.A. So young, too. A gun, sir. Sure. Simpkin paid up without a murmur. Jones squawked a little, but I threatened him. He'll pay up tomorrow. Who? The sheriff. You can forget about him. He won't bother you anymore. Yeah, I dropped a pineapple. A baby face killer. Oh, don't worry, D.A. I took care of that, too. Yeah, rub crayon a lot. And you can erase John. I think Mike Morgan was palmy the stage that had the D.A. rubbing out people. His smile, it scares me. Oh, that's fine, D.A. Yeah, I'll, I'll make the rest of the collections tomorrow. Pleasant dreams, D.A. That was D.A. Sweetheart, you're a chip off the old block. Me? You mean my father? I never saw him. Did you know him? Did we know him? <laughs> Why, Willie here was his right hand and me. <laughs> I was his left. And that's the way it's going to be from now on. You're We're going to be your boys. You're going to take over your father's rack, uh, uh, business. Me? Well, I didn't even know he had Sure, him. Eddie. We're taking over your father's business. Holly's got a wonderful brain. Well, we've got to take him along. Great for the organization. Would you gentlemen excuse me and talk over the details with Ollie? I gotta practice on my typewriter. Now, don't you worry your little head. Forget that old Tommy. We're gonna get you a new 1943 model. No! Babyface Morgan's taken over. Babyface. Babyface Morgan. Babyface Morgan. Look at this. Hey, look at that. I don't see nothing. That's them. Didn't take them long to come up. Doc, meet the chief and his brain. How do you do? Uh, how do you... Uh... Uh, gentlemen, will you excuse us for a few minutes? We have some private business to discuss. Yeah. Uh, well, uh... Hey, you guys can uh, look out the window. The altitude's amazing from up here. Thank you. I should have known when I saw that telegram, baby face Morgan. Why, you blithering idiots. Do you realize what you've done? That kid's a yokel. Yeah, the kind that goes without a hat. But, boss, don't let that face fool you. The kid's funny tough. We heard him with our own ears. Why don't you relax? Can't you see the kid's nothing but a harmless, bewildered baby? He doesn't know what it's all about. He was talking about pineapples. Listen, Brains, pineapple can be fruit as well as bonds. That's right, pineapple is fruit. Doc, need I remind you if Torelli hears of this, he'll be our next boss, and then may our souls rest in peace. Every thug in the country's joined up. I want to meet the chief. We'll take one look at him and you supply the answer. Not me. That's a $64 question.
Oh, gee, they look like ants way down there. Those are the masses. They are. That's the first time I've ever seen them. Say, Doc, we could think of a phony and pass him off as Big Mike's son. Nobody'd be any wiser. Nobody but the fellow we put in. And for the rest of our lives, he's got us on spot. No, that'll never do. Gentlemen, this is our lifesaver. This contains the corporation papers of the Acme Protection Company. And that gentleman isn't in more ways than one. I don't get it. You and your pineapples. Shut up! Mike Morgan bought this little company for the future. He figured if he ever got picked up, it made him look legitimate. So? Since nobody knows about it, we'll make use of it. Now, here's the idea. We'll build the baby face up as a mysterious character. Nobody, including the police, knows what he looks like. So? By using this company as a front and putting the kid in as president, we have the perfect fall guy. Excellent! The scapegoat. In case of a blow-off, the kid is left holding the bag. Gee, Doc. You certainly got the brains. And just one more thing. The boys must never meet the chief, and the chief must never meet the boys. Understand? I'm sorry to be so long in getting in touch with you, but you know how business is. Oh, sure. Well, anything wrong? Well, no, sir, not exactly, but... Well, it's no fun just sitting here. It's a wonderful office, but I like to keep busy. My boy, I know exactly how you feel, but uh, you must be lenient with me. After all, this business has been neglected for a long time. It'll take a little while to build it up again. Can you tell me about how long, Mr. Rogers? Well, that all depends. As president of the Acme Protection Company, you ought to know that this company needs refinancing. Now, as chairman of the finance committee, I'm taking care of that. In the very near future, from time to time, money will accrue to the company, which I will accredit to your account. You will? How much? Well, that also depends. Uh, business conditions, Wall Street reactions, a million details that are a little difficult to explain right now. You understand? Oh, sure. Sure, Mr. Rogers. I'll explain everything to Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I'm afraid I must be leaving. Oh, one thing. I wish you'd refrain from writing any unnecessary checks. Your immediate needs, of course, that's understood. The bank will honor your signature. Oh, uh, by the way, how do you like your uh, new sales manager, W.W.? Oh, Willie? Yeah, Willie. Oh. Let me the left, Jeff. Well, what do you got so far? Nothing. All right, well, let's start from there. Dignity, Mabel. The president demands it. How are you, W.W.? That's you, Willie. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's me. Uh, W.W., why's Willie? <laughs> now, look, Willie. Keep your eye on those two acts in there. Charlie and the mob are asking too many questions. They're waiting for me now. We can't take any chances. And, Mabel, you watch Willie. Yeah. Call at the drugstore, Mabel. Order me a ham sandwich. For yourself, a secretary special. And for the bunny, some vitamin B1 with lettuce. Why don't you get rid of that monster? Oh, honey. This is going to be your future fur coat. Never mind, Willie. The baby says pay off. I say pay off. The boys will be here every Monday to collect. Baby face insists. And the baby face won't take no. Come across. Come across. Come across. Pay off. Pay off. Pay off. Pay off. No. No. Miss Virginia, that's uh, for, uh, 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 it's for protection. Protection? We don't need any protection. But you don't understand. We either pay or go out of business. What are you talking about? We've been threatened. This uh, baby-faced Morgan. Gangsters. What about the police? Don't you see, Miss Virginia, by the time they round up the whole gang, we'll be out of business. They work fast. Putting the guilty men in jail won't get you back your business. There's only one thing to do, and that's to pay them. 
That's right, sister. Then you better hurry up. My palm's getting itchy. Come on. Hand it over. Get out of here, you... you. I'm gonna call the police. Oh, threatening us, huh? All right, hold on to your dough temporarily. We'll be back with a big surprise. Nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three hundred bucks. What's the take, dog? With this, sixty-seven thousand, and we're just getting started. By the way, how are the customers lining up? Like sheep, except for a girl. She's the boss of the Clark Transportation Company. But don't worry, we're paying the place a social call. History repeats itself, just like old times. Only the bourbon is better. <laughs> Something on my mind. I'd like to get it off. The dough. What's happened to it? Baby faces the bank. Yeah? I don't like the idea of a guy holding cash I don't even know. How do I know there is a baby face? You'll meet him. When he sees fit. Yeah? Well, it better be soon. You see me. Awfully hot for November, don't you think? A one, two, three, four. Hail to the, hail to the, Acme Protection Company. Uh, Mabel, hit that last note again. Oh, come on now, let's take it all together. Come on. A one, two, two three, four. Hail to the, hail to the, Acme Protection Company. AC dash M E. Hail, hail. <laughs> Nothing like a pep song to get the sales force into action. That's right, Cousin Ollie. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a matter of vitamin B1. <laughs> Come, Mabel. I'm ashamed of myself. Mr. Rogers, our chairman, giving us all that money and we're not doing anything to help. But that's big business for you, kid. The peasants do all the work and we ride the golden chariot. Well, just the same, I'm ashamed of myself. All right, you want to go to work? Go out and sell insurance. I found these in the desk. All you have to do is have the people fill them in. Oh, but I've never sold insurance before. What do I do? What do I say? Personal magnetism is the answer, kid. Just turn on the old personality. Break down their sales resistance. Convince them they need insurance. That's all there is to it. Oh, I couldn't. You do it, Cousin Ollie. Me? The vice president of a big concern like this? Now, how would it look if I were to go out peddling insurance? Yeah, but I'm the president. That's just it. Take our country. Who does all the work, the president or the vice president? President? Well, sure. Nobody ever hears of the vice president. He just stays in the office. I guess you're right. But who do I see? Why, you go out and... You ask the silliest questions. Morgan declares war. It says here they smashed the whole front of the building. What do you think of that? I think she's pretty. Don't you get it? No. You wouldn't. Here are people that really need us. They made the order for us. But with all those accidents, they'll be clamoring for insurance. She sure is pretty. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get down and see her myself. Oh, but that isn't fair, Cousin Ollie. Remember what you said about the president? Well, what do you want the vice president to do? To sit around here like a, like a thing? Well, that's up to the vice president. Uh, all right, all right, we'll both go. Get out and stay out. What happened? She threw me out. Oh, she's too pretty for that. Oh, yeah? Well, all right, wise guy, you go in. Thanks, Cousin Ollie, I will. Uh. Miss Clark? Who are you? 
I'm uh, Morgan of the Acme Protection Company. Babyface Morgan? Babyface Morgan? The gangster? Oh. oh get out of here, you. You babyface. You're making a mistake, Miss well, Clark. I'm going to call the police. Look, you're much too nervous. Can I tell them for you? Miss Clark, I'm here to protect you. You mustn't be frightened. My company will insure you against anything, even gangsters. Well, operator, would you get... Then you're not Babyface Morgan. Of course not. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm Edward Morgan, and I'm president of the Acme Protection Company, and Cousin Ollie out there is vice president. You mean the one I... Oh, I'm so sorry. Won't you invite him in? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like to take care of this myself. You mean you're going to insure us in spite of everything that's happened? Oh, of course. We're an insurance company, aren't we? Miss Virginia, we'd better sign up immediately. A $5,000 policy. No, a $10,000 policy. Uh, yes, Mr. Williams, but don't rush, Mr. Morgan. Uh, won't you have a seat? Well, uh, no, thanks. I, th I think I'd better make up the application policies right away. I... <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> Too bad that Clark girl didn't wake up. This ought to do it. Should be along any minute now. You ready, Gap? There it is. Pay off now. Come on. That's too bad. Too bad. Uh, Miss Virginia, Babyface Morgan just blew up one of our trucks. Was the driver hurt? Just shaken up a trifle. But don't worry, we're insured. I'll call Mr. Morgan. Oh, Mr. Morgan. You better let me talk to him. Company. Well, what do you think it was? Who? Oh, him. Okay, just a moment. Hey, Gilla. I didn't know you was a winner. Oh, Virginia. I mean, Miss Clark. This is Mr. Morgan. Eddie. It's her. I, I have some bad news for you. Babyface Morgan just blew up one of our trucks. How much was the damage? Well, uh, about $2,500. $2,500? That's wonderful. It's a lot of money, isn't it? You will? Sure I will. I'll, I'll be right over. Will you be there? Yes, I'll be here. <laughs> Goodbye. Boy, am I lucky baby face Morgan just blew up one of her trucks. Now I can see her. Where's the checkbook? Just a minute. Remember what Mr. Rogers said. He may not like it. Oh, yeah. I better call him. Babyface Morgan's still a mystery. Police are able to find... Yeah? Oh, Morgan. How are you, my boy? Mr. Rogers, I, I've got a problem. There, there's a girl, and she needs money badly. A girl, eh? Well, my boy, you must never let a lady down, you know. Go ahead, give it to her. Yeah. So long. Oh, the kid's got a girl, eh? Well, <laughs> I hope she keeps them occupied. See, this spaghetti's good. You ought to taste it. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's nice of you to give me such quick service. Service? Oh, uh, service? No, no. I mean the check. The check? Well, I haven't finished eating yet. Oh, no, Mr. Morgan. The check you brought me this morning. Oh, well, think nothing of it. That's a family trait, protecting people. Would you like your children to be like that? My children? Oh, oh yes, of course. Uh, what do you think of Central City? 
You do like big families, don't you? Have you been through the subway? You know, if I have a son, I hope he's a blonde. Oh, you, you should see our library. And I'd like him to be a champion swimmer, too. Oh, I love to ride through the park at night. Don't you? Don't I what? The park. <laughs> the park. You and I, the park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Barney, I've never seen anything like it. Our truck was wrecked only last night. And at 10 o'clock this morning, I had the money. What do you mean I couldn't have had it? I just deposited the check. And it was good. Phillips Transportation, 10,000. I'll be right over. Hello? Shine on freight? Five thousand? I'll be right down. <clears throat> yes? Sure, as much as you want. As I was saying, on the fifth instinct of the fifth month, I says to Mo, Hey, me, well, ain't you gonna answer that? I wasn't hired to be his telephone operator. He'll take his own call. It's enough when I buzz the buzzer. Gee, but you're soft, baby. Willie, you say the sweetest things. I was talking to the bunny. All right, then you do the bug with the bunny tonight. Not the stolen mug. We ain't playing games. I don't care if you are. Do you know what's going to happen? A truck a day. A pleasure, gentlemen. You can start right now. We've got a two-ton truck we've been trying to get rid of for years. Show me, buddy. Today's payday. You mean, you mean you don't care? I don't get it. Go away. You bother me. Oh, yeah? Well, we're a tough group. And besides, you're antagonizing baby face. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Who am I doing business with? Children? I don't get it. But, boss, they just laughed at us. Some of them even throwed me out. Well, I can't figure it out. Everything's in reverse. The mice are chasing the cats. I don't care what it is. Babyface gave me his orders. No more stalling. He said... Never mind what he said. Just leave it to me. like this and you say, here's the setup, see? I don't like what's going on, and you know what I'm going to do about it? Oh, but Cousin Ollie, he's a gangster. Oh, baby face won't hurt you. I know his type. He's probably got a streak of his back that wide. He has? All right, I'll walk up to him and I'll say, you're ruining our business. You got to cut it out. And then I'll say, uh, how can I do that? I don't even know what he looks like. Well, I never thought of that. The phone book. Oh, what a yokel. Who ever heard of a gangster being in a phone book and the hideout and the place guarded by malls and everything? I'll get a detective agency. They know everything. Where's the classifieds? J.P. Brown. I'll be back. Why? Ain't nature wonderful? Where are you going? Don't question the vice president. He's got something there. <laughs> Before that thing rudely interrupted us. Well, I wanted to say that 
The black rabbit spoiled the color scheme. Why, that's your future sable, Mabel. You're raising me another coat? Certainly. Only this one makes with the puff sleeves, because Blackie's fatter. Ah, mm. oh, gee, thanks, Bubbles. As I said before, it's imperative that you find Babyface Morgan. Now, this is big business, Mr. Brown, and time means money. Very well, Mr. Harris. I will get my staff on it immediately. But understand, there will be quite a few extra charges. Oh, of course, of course. Just build the company. Money is no object. Oh, well, then you just leave the rest to us, Mr. Harris. <laughs> yeah, we've never had a failure yet. Your case, although it is a bit difficult, will be no exception. Good day. Good day. Handle them with the kid gloves. They're laughing at you. Charlie, you're responsible. Me? I'm responsible. Why? What's the matter with Babyface? Hello. I'm glad I finally reached you, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, we're having terrible trouble. You've got to help us. It's Babyface. Yes, Chief. I, I think you ought to come over here and talk to us right away. Look, look, look I'm taking care of matters right now. I well, well, don't get excited, Chief. I, I'm doing everything I can, I, but... Now, easy, Chief, easy. But, hey, let me explain it to him. Hello, Mr. Rogers, this is Oliver Harris. I, but... 24 hours? Well, okay, you're the boss. We'll do anything you say, but... but, but, but. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. He hung up on us, but... Well, you heard it. I've stuck out my neck for you guys, but this is the end. Babyface is giving us 24 hours. Doc, I've got a hunch. Business doesn't fall off because it gets cold outside. Another mob must have moved in. Hey, maybe you got something there, Torelli. But if there is another mob, that's right up your alley. Oh. When you see trouble ahead, you give me the green light, huh? Don't give me that. Where's Babyface? He can't be so tough if he allows another mob to move in. Okay, I'm only a stooge, you know that. What are you gonna do? Call Babyface. You got a great future, Torelli. I wouldn't jeopardize it if I were you. Take it easy. Let me find out who's muscling in. Gap, get me a truck and a couple of driver's outfits. I'll take care of the situation in a new way. Edward Morgan, president. You look wonderful behind a desk. A little young, but this is a young generation. Virginia, I wish you were my secretary. I never gave dictation, but I could learn. Well, if I knew how to take shorthand, I think I'd even give up the trucking business. Here's your mail, kid. Well, she's got her nerve calling you kid. You ought to do something about that. A president demands respect. I know that's what I keep telling her, but she just doesn't do anything about it. Say, this is from the detective agency. Five hundred dollars? Well, let's see the picture. Oh, this must be a joke. Five hundred dollars for a picture of me. Well, I like that. Just who does he think you are? I don't know. Well, you and I are going down to see that detective and tell him a thing or two. Yeah, we're going to tell him. Yes. If someone comes from a small town, they can do anything. Well, I'll show them. I know you will. And don't let him off easy either. I won't. No. This is it. I'm going to tell him a few things. Oh. My name is Morgan. Yes, I, I, I know Mr. Morgan. I, what's, what's the, the idea, idea of this? Yeah, I, oh, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. It, it was all a mistake. You see... We didn't know who you were. You bet your life it was a mistake, trying to make a fool out of him. Yeah, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I, that isn't Babyface Morgan's picture, it's mine. And he's a respectable businessman. Sure. 
Sure, sure, of course. That, that's right. <laughs> and he's not going to pay you the $500. No, 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 of course he isn't. Of course I'm not. And you can uh, keep that picture. Uh, that uh, one anyway. Thank you. I, I, I will. I, and okay. you ought to be ashamed oh, of yourself. Come on, Eddie, taking me for a... this place. Oh, my goodness. Did we have a narrow escape? Yeah, yeah. And that mall of his. Oh. Please, please, you're breaking my arm. I'm an old man. Who's giving him protection? The Acme Protection Company, Fremont Building. All right, we'll pay Acme a visit. You two take care of the boss. I'll keep the truck out. Come on. Hurry, boss. We're freezing. I've asked them at least a dozen times to fix that thing, and they won't listen. Yes, Fritcher, ain't it? I'll go down and pay the janitor a postal visit. Thanks, W.W. I'm going down to see the janitor, Mabel. You take care of the bunnies. You think more of those bunnies than you do of me. Yes. Do they want to get married? No. What was that name again? Acme, stupid. Acme, Acme, Acme. There it is. Acme Protective Agency. I didn't expect two of you. Why would I do it? Where's the boss? Straight ahead, kid. Okay, fellow, we're turning on the heat. Well, it's about time. I've been expecting you all morning. Look, brother, I said we're turning on the heat. I know what you said. I've been asking for it, haven't I? Go ahead, get started. All right, Mousy, let him have it. He ain't so tough. Why, he's only a kid. He's got a face like a baby. A face like a baby? Look. What is it? It's a baby face. Baby face? What are you talking about? It's the Acme guy that's bustling in on our racket. He's the baby face. Why, that dirty double-crosser, I'll fix him. You better not, boss. He's, he's too tough, I tell you. We we had him covered. Yeah, the both of us. And, and he just sat there staring at us. You mean you didn't let him have it? No, I, honest, boss, the, the guy ain't human. Well, I'm going to call a little meeting for the boys. Well, they love this. The dog and the baby face double-crossing the moth. Get in. It's Willie. The gap in the mouse are in the kid's office. Come on. Just when I was ready to jig. Hope we make it on time before Torelli gets wise. There's only one thing to do. Grab the dough and beat it. What about the mob? South America's a big place, Deacon. And it's still cold, Virginia. <laughs> the craziest janitors are. She can give me a date, will you? I'm freezing. Oh, no, I'd rather be alone. Oh, not you, Virginia. I'll see you at six. Bye, baby. Goodbye, baby. You and it. I thought you was dead. Shut up. Watch the door outside. Where are those two men? Oh, you mean those two... Never yeah, mind. Where's the bank book? The bank book? Oh, uh, I'll take care of this, Edward. He doesn't know anything about financing. Remember when we called you on the phone? Never mind that. Where's the bank book? Well, that's what Cousin Ollie's trying to tell you. There isn't any bank book anymore. No, but... What have you done with the money? Selling insurance. What? What kind of insurance? Racketeer insurance. It was my idea. Hell. Yeah, and we'd be doing all right, too, if it weren't for all those claims. Claims? What claims? Well, it's very simple, Mr. Rogers. We've been insuring trucks. You've been using the money that I put in your account to insure truck owners? Yeah, and if it weren't for that baby face, we'd have made a fortune. Why, you idiot, you've been robbing yourself. What do you mean, Mr. Rogers? Your baby face. Well, Doc. 
He says you and the baby face pulled a double cross. He's called a meeting for the mob at the South Side Social Club. Uh oh, that's bad. You got me into this. You forced me. I want to go home. We'll both go. Sit down. You haven't got a chance. They'll be watching us like hawks. They won't dare. I'll call the police. Yeah, and go to jail for 20 years. Don't forget, Mr. Morgan, your baby face. Don't mention it. I've got it. It's our only chance. We've got to beat Torelli to the punch. We've got to go to the boys before they come for us. They don't get you, Doc. Why, it's simple enough. I've been handling mugs all my life. I know the way they think. Never give them a chance to figure things out. Baby, uh, uh, Eddie, you've got to face the mob this afternoon. Not me. I'm no gangster. I'm going home. Over my dead body. Now you listen to me, you little... Oh, I'm sorry, son. I shouldn't have lost my temper, but I can't help it. I'm doing this for you, son. For you and your girl. On you depends the wives and children of the truck owners. The mob wants their money back. Lives don't count. If they don't collect, you'll be responsible. You've got to make a speech, son. You've got to come through. Yes, you're right, Mr. Rogers. It, it does depend on me. When do we start? Good boy! Now! Oh, no, no. They're not gentlemen. They're mugs. <laughs> mugs. Dear mugs. No mugs, you mugs! You mugs. You, you mugs. You mugs. Guns. Rods! Rods. Out of the corner of your mouth. Take it on the lamb. Rods! Mugs! Come on, come on, snap out of it. My life's at stake, too. Keep after him, Lucy. On the spot. On the spot. Louder! Come on! Let go of me, you mugs! Go ahead, tell him. You guys just been treated to the sweetest double cross in the history of any mob. Where's the cash? And what have you been doing about it? Nothing. But well, we don't like it. Baby faces, no bargain. And Doc? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Nothing. The baby face. The baby face. All right, you stay out of it. Hi, you mugs. I don't want any interruptions, see? I don't want anyone opening their kiss her until I get through, see? I understand there are a few guys around here who don't like the way I'm running this outfit. Arguments rub me the wrong way. If there's anybody here who's got any objection to the way I'm running things, I want him to get up and spill his gab. I... I got... I got something I want to say. You have? That's all I wanted to hear. All right, you two guys. Case them in cement and toss them in the river. All right, break it up. Let's get down to cases. I'm going to give you the lowdown on what plays. That dough we just collected. It's nothing. It's chicken feed. I got it invested in the sweetest little racket in the world. You guys are going to get yourself plenty of defense bonds. There's only one thing I can tell you now. Keep your kisses shut. Follow my orders and leave the rest to me. I'll do the rest. I'll be seeing it, boys. Okay, Chief. Let's go. It's a phony. What a performance that kicked you. Yeah, that was terrific, wasn't I? I'm telling you that baby face was so realistic. I thought he shot you. <laughs> yeah, even rigor mortis set in. Again, again? Who? Rick and Morty. That stiff's alive. We better get Torelli in a hurry. Torelli is burning and we've got the blow. Now listen, son, you better grab your pal Ollie and take it on the land. You're hot. Torelli is gunning for you, too. But I have a date with Virginia Okay, and then... it's your life. You know what to do with it. I've got to tell her the truth. Come on, Deacon, grab your bags and meet me downstairs. The train leaves in 30 minutes. Okay. And then I'll... I'll... Look, don't bother me. Baby face. Oh, don't. Don't. Honest, I don't know. Tighter. Don't. Don't. You're going to tell me where Morgan is. Honest. I don't know. Honest, I don't. 
Come on, talk. Oh, all right, all right. He's gonna meet Virginia. Virginia, who's Virginia? Virginia, come on. Oh. Clark. Clark trucking? Yes, sir. Get over there, pick that lug up, bring it back to the pool room, meet you there later. Send the boys to the Metropole, get Doc and the Deacon. All right, search this dump. Those has got to be hit somewhere. Rifle the files in the safe. I'll take care of this dinner off. Gosh, what gigantic mice. How'd he get in there? Kitty, 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 kitty. Mabel, there goes your sable. All right, just a word, Morgan. I don't know. You had a date with him, didn't you? Yes, but he's gone. All right, Mousy, take her to the club. Trilly will make her sing. <laughs> Get in there, sister. To the pool room. Wait here, please. So wait. What happened? Who did it? Are you all right? Tell me, what Mr. happened? Mark. Mr. Morgan, they, they got Virginia. Who? Babyface Morgan. What? They took her away. Well, where? Where? I don't know. They said something about a club. Club? Give me the police station. Send an ambulance right away to the Clark Transportation Company. And if you want Babyface Morgan, you'll find him at the Southside Social Club. Southside Social Club, hurry! Where's the Babyface? I don't know any Babyface. And you better let me out of here. I'm gonna call the police. Shut up or I'll... I don't want to waste much more time. Once more, where's the baby face? I told you I don't know any baby face. I've never seen it. <laughs> you slapped Virginia. Oh. The baby face. Welcome, stranger. Careful, kid. Oh, baby face. You slapped Virginia. You lied to me. What's on your mind? You slap Virginia. How you got What about that federal payroll job? Who's up by getting the rebel? What about that snatch on the west side? I told you, I don't know anything about it. 
Of course not, babyface. I'm not babyface. Sure you're not. Listen, kid. How'd you like a drink of water? Nice cool <clears throat> water. No, thanks. I'm not thirsty. Maybe a cigarette. I don't use them. Listen, babyface. You can't get away with this. You're facing a tough rap. We got enough on you to hang you. Now, if you come clean, of course, we'll go easy on you. Yeah, we'll speak to the DA for you. Uh, I don't told you I'd know nothing. I'm not babyface. I'm Edward Morgan. Where's Virginia? Virginia? You mean your girlfriend? Yeah, she must be worried about me. I'd like to see her. <laughs> worried about you? She left last night. Where? Well, your guess is as good as mine. The last time I saw her, she was getting on a train with another fella. On a train? Was it Cousin Ollie? Who knows? From where we stood, it looked like love. All right, I'll talk. What do you want me to say? Who killed McGee? I did. I killed a man in St. Louis and one in Detroit. And I robbed a bank in Boston. And the one you're talking about, too. And I blow up all those trucks. Thank you. Okay, fellas, here's your headline. Baby face cracks. Go. What happened then? Within 24 hours, all the truck owners had received the money for their damages. So you see, the door went round and round, and the kid was the jockey. Well, that draws a different light on the situation. He, what? Virginia! He he... Wait a minute, lady. This man is dangerous. I thought you and Cousin Ollie... You lied to me. Take the handcuffs off him. Why, oh, can't. This is baby face. Oh, there is no baby face. Huh? Well, I'll be... Eddie! I want to go home. Oliver. Yes, Edward? Go back to the hotel and pack my bags. Are we going home? No. We're going to Niagara Falls. No, not honeymoon. Good luck, kid. Drop me a card. We sure will, Mr. Rogers. Where to? I'll be at the seashore. Alcatraz. Maybe we ought to go there, too. Baby, thanks.